Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 67, for Monday, October the 19th. And we are working our way right through the month. My name is Clyde J. Kale, and I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Okay. For our listeners please visit www.talkartpodcast.com. That's talk, T-A-L-K, art, A-R-T, podcast.com for the information links. And this podcast is, this episode is a tribute to the great Paul Klein, who recently passed away, uh, Last week, we talked a little bit about him, and uh, this week, I've uh, actually posted uh, one of his videos of his actual, from his actual class. It's the course that uh, Diane and I took, so you guys be able to see what we look like. Uh, God, was I fat. <laughs> was I fat then? <laughs> I, I have lost some weight since then, but boy, did I look fat. <laughs> That's why I hate looking at myself in videos, too. <laughs> but... Um, a link there, but before we start talking about uh, our, our tribute to Paul Klein, I want to continue our discussion about social media and some of the things that's happened recently with uh, social media, with Twitter and Facebook and whatnot, and some of the controversy. I think the important thing, uh, a lesson that I learned from uh, the old time radio, from the radio folks. Um, is uh, proper behave, behavior, how to behave yourself online. Now, when you listen to enough of the old-time radio, frequently the uh, stars or participants at the end of the show, they always say, especially Bob Hope and Jack Benny were uh, famous for this, they would always say, thank you so much for inviting me into your life. They thanked their listeners for inviting them into their living rooms so what we have to have the proper mentality is with uh as you gain more followers and uh, people who who uh pay attention and consume uh, your content you have to have the proper mentality that it's actually they are inviting you into their little world and you have to use the philosophy like uh, uh, if uh, 
you had an acquaintance or a colleague and you invited them over to your house for dinner. They come in the door and the first thing they do is take the shoes off and flop down on your couch and couch and turn your TV or they go into your kitchen and open your refrigerator up and start, you know, going through your, through your, your food and whatnot, and maybe go into your bathroom, look through your medical you know, cabinet and you're going to throw that person out or you're going to call the police on them, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to use that same attitude with social media. Um, it's a, it's a sad thing that Facebook calls friends because they're not really friends. Yeah. Maybe a small circle of your actual family members, or whatever friends, but as you gain, you know, and you start getting up into the hundreds and the thousands, like on Instagram and the thousands and on Twitter, the thousands and two thousands, whatever, these are not really true friends. These are people who are interested in what you say and what you provide for the Pacific content. Now, if you provide political content, okay, then get political. But if you provide, as in the case of artists, you provide visual art, then keep it to visual art. <laughs> keep it visual art, you know, art, art related. Don't intermix uh, political commentary with, you know, with your, unless your art is political commentary. Now that's, everybody has a right to their own opinion. No one's saying you can't express your opinion, but your social media is not necessarily the place to do it. And I didn't emphasize that enough uh, during last week's discussion. I really wanted to point that out. I have been using the Internet. Now, I'm going to be showing my age here. I've been using the Internet since 1978, since before the Internet. When I was in the military, the Internet came about because of the military. It was widely used through the Department of Defense in the military. Not the Internet that we have today, but a, a, a version of it. We had chats. We had uh, messaging, but it was done with teletype and combination teletype and telephone. Now, we were restrained because of the rules of our job. You know, so there, that, was, that was a restraint on us. So we knew how to behave. You know, and I developed that that attitude after getting out of the military, and then in the in the 90s, and when the internet you know came about and the World Wide Web as we know it and everything. Okay, the only restraint there's really no restraint on my behavior. The only dis only restraint is uh, my own conscious, my own self control. You know, and. Uh, Something like I like people use weird names for their emails. You know, I use my real name and it just scares the heck out of the hackers when they get a message. Wow. That's your real name. Yeah, that's me. Why should I hide? <laughs> I also always use the attitude I had when I was, I worked at the, at the uh, Purdue university for a while after I got out of the military in a central computer center. And I became real good friends with uh, an engineer who was kind of like a mentor you know, to me. And um, he, the internet was just starting to really come about to the public, opening up to the public. We had a form of the internet on the university, but it, you know, it wasn't quite as widespread as what we have now, but it was just, you know, this is in the, uh, uh, this is like, uh, what, 1980, 82, 80. Yeah. About 81, 82. When I, when I was there, so it wasn't, quite out there in the public, but it was, it was among universities. And, uh, he, the advice, I always remember his advice. He said, before you put your fingers on that keyboard, think about what you're going to say, because it's going to be there forever and ever. All these computers have logs. They record, they back up your job. You back up our computers. And that was my job. I worked night shift. I backed up the, com the computers onto magnetic tape, you know? And uh, mm. it, so, so what you put out there is going to be out there forever and ever. So my advice, especially to the young artist is control yourselves, please, because you may have a very wonderful opportunity in the future, 10 years from now, but then when they start researching, they said, well, wait a minute. They may, they may say, well, that's, that's youth. But uh, with what's been going on, you know, 
uh, there's been a lot of politicians and, and uh, a lot of corporate people that have been getting themselves in trouble because things they did when they were uh, young and when they were in college, it's coming back now to bite them for us older artists. And we, uh, you know, we who the Internet wasn't around, you know, when uh, we were you know, starting up, you know, we've emphasized in previous podcasts, it's a great tool. And that's the way it should be utilized. It's a tool. You should think of it as a tool and uh, not be afraid of it, but just use some uh, common sense. You two want to add to this? So before we start talking about Paul Klein. <laughs> well, I think it, it's like anything else. When you go to a party at somebody's house or something, you're not going to, like you were saying, you don't go in, barge in and take over and do stuff that you wouldn't, you know, do so it's the same way online you don't um you don't want to be just like barging into the chat rooms and and <laughs> on facebook groups and things and throwing things around it's you know nobody wants to be around somebody like that mm -hmm. so it's not helpful for your career but it's also not a good thing just for for you to do in general as a person i mean you know you don't you don't treat your friends that way and you wouldn't expect them to treat you that way either. So I think it's, you know, it's online as well as offline. You should just act like you do offline. But like you said, everything's recorded too. So you gotta, you gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. and offline, it's not always recorded, but <laughs> everybody's got phones nowadays that record a lot too. So yeah. you never know. Yeah, nothing's pretty much nothing's private anymore, but no. um, unless you shut the door and turn the phones off or whatever, but um <laughs> Yeah, I agree with y'all. I mean, especially photographs and stuff that you take. Uh, you need to be very careful about what you put online because it will come back to haunt you. You know, I mean, just because you're wild and free right now doesn't mean you're not going to want to straighten up and fly right later on and then you'll have that hanging over you, you know, so. Yep. It may really ruin a great opportunity. That mm hmm future you know and it's just on a personal level it's just good to uh, to be generous to be nice there's nothing you know it it's not uh, like on my on, on my own personal feed on facebook uh i have people that follow me uh artists and galleries i have people of both sides of the political aisle and they and they go at it back and forth and everything and i i Sometimes I reply, sometimes I don't. But when I reply, it's nice. I mean, I, it's not, I don't consider it my responsibility to point their defects to them. They're adults. They can figure it out themselves. They can look in the mirror. They can decide. Personal persuasion. In fact, it leads me to a, a book I read uh, several times several years ago and i actually have the audio book it was a it's an it's a classic it was written a long time ago it's called how to make friends and influence people i think it was originally written like in 1936 or whatever but the audio version uh, <clears throat> there is an updated version for the uh it's called for the for the internet age and a lot of the same principles are emphasized and but they apply it to social media and email and what yeah and and all the, the modern facilities are available and a lot of that is um you know it comes from what my grandmother used to tell me it makes a lot of sense now she used to say hey you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar <laughs> exactly you know and you can make your point without being using profanity or anything like that when you're online i mean Everybody has a point of view, but you have to not be um, ugly about it with your point of view. I mean, if you use manners and common sense and, and uh, what was the other one? But in anyway, what I'm trying to get at is, uh, is like you said, think about what you're going to type before you type it. Or think about that photograph that you're going to put on. Is that going to come back to bite me later on? You know, so... Yeah, All right. I think this is a great segue into our uh, our tribute to uh, Paul Klein. And uh, one of the videos I selected uh, uh, two videos that you'll find at uh, Talk Art 
talkartpodcast.com. That's talkartpodcast.com. And was the video, the, the first video that I came across on YouTube where he is given a uh, speech at a, uh, I think it's at a university in Wisconsin. And he talks about how he believes that any artist can be successful. You just have to have the right strategy and the right attitude. And, and that is a, just a very inspiring uh, talk. Did, did you two, you two seen that, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I saw that before I took his class and that was kind of what convinced me to, to take the class from him because he seemed um, really genuine. And um, he talked about how no matter what kind of art you create, you could all be successful and we could all work together and um, collaborate and all those kind of things. So I, that was, yeah, he talked, he talked about it for. He, we like last time we mentioned he, his, his favorite phrase is he believes that the art community is actually villages. It's several villages and, and the segments and you just have to find the, uh, the proper village that, uh, that you want to participate in and that you're accepted in, you know, and, and, uh, that, uh, that was a video too, that it, it inspired me. And when I came across that, that video, cause I had just decided, uh, in 2017 to, uh, you know, my daughters were bugging me and saying, kept, especially my older star kept saying, no, you can make a career of this, go for it. You know, and, you know, so I was investigating and I just started, I, Put, started putting my art up online and so i was just how to get into galleries and what direction to take oh, how, i mean i was watching videos out of the wazoo on youtube and there were so many that <laughs> like and there were so many contradictory and then i came across paul klein's and it, it it resonated you know it resonated with me it uh, it touched me and i said hey so i investigated and I saw his course and I said, okay, I can afford, you know, I can probably afford that. And so I, uh, you know, I, I went to his website. What I did though was, uh, before even, uh, signing up, I sent out, I went, he had, because he always posted a list of his graduates, previous you know, artists that he's worked with. And I went down that and looked at their website and I, I picked, I think I sent like 15 emails out those different artists and i got like maybe five back of the five three were very complimentary and the other two were well yeah he's okay but i wish i hadn't you know they were a little negative and but the ones that were complimentary were just like you know he was he was their their god i mean they were just overboard you know and you really you you will get a lot out of this you know and blah 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 and so i was okay I'm going to sign up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what bothered me was they were all of them that I came across. I kept searching. There wasn't, there wasn't hardly any representational artists at all. They were all very modern art, abstract, you know, and sculpture. And so I thought, okay, you know, but so he had his, his first course, his first night was a free, was free introductory. I remember I prompt, I, I posted that question to him, you know, when he had gave all of us an opportunity, you know, and he said, yeah, there's, there's a place for you. We just have to find it. And I think I can help you, you know? And okay. So I signed up after that night, that night. I, yeah. So the video that I posted was the second video, which is the first video when we, of all the people, all the artists that had signed up. I think we had what about 30, 35, didn't we, Diane, or something like something that? Something like that, yeah. I, I actually had forgotten a lot of the people, but um, I've kept in contact with a lot of them, uh, a lot more of them, I guess, than, than not, <laughs> which kind of surprised me. But there's, um, there was a really uh, diverse group. We were from all over the world. We were on all different levels of, you know, accomplishment or whatever, and different levels in our art. It was. It made it really interesting because of that. Absolutely. So. I mean, really, there was a, a French woman who, at the time, was living in Vietnam, and uh, later, later on in the course, like I guess, like two, or two or three sessions later, uh, she said something that completely flabbergasted me that I had, I, I could never think of, you know, of having to deal with. 
she actually her art before she could put it out in the public it had to be reviewed by a special uh, minister of the arts of the government of vietnam and if they didn't like it she couldn't sell it she couldn't put it out i was like oh my god well, that's rough <laughs> Government official come to my house and studio and tell me I can't <laughs> <laughs> under, but she was under penalty of law, under penalty of imprisonment. If she put that work out without being approved, of course, now she, like I said, she was a French, she was there for other work. I guess her husband, you know, was there and, but she was just a working artist trying to start her art career there. And it just, it amazed me that uh, someone would have to live under those restrictions, you know, and uh, That's socialism for you. <laughs> socialism, communism, that was, that was it. Yeah. And uh, so, and then we had uh, one of the artists that was uh, interviewed was uh, Tanya Bruguera, I'll probably say her name wrong, who was from, from Cuba. Who uh, that her her in webinar was very interesting because she was a very much an activist, and uh, she had at one time was thrown in jail for a while for her art, for her activities, and then they really, <laughs> her. and then she came to the United States, but she still lived in Cuba. She traveled back and forth, but she was under under surveillance all the time and uh was somewhat restricted in her uh, in her art you know and and it, it was nice hearing her perspective uh of uh, how she kind of you know went under the un, under the wire now and, and you know and and how she was still able to create art but it was you know in special circumstances and, but she wasn't about she didn't want to leave leave her homeland she loved cuba and her family was in there she you know she could have easily because uh, Paul asked her, she could have easily several times when she had, had went to the United States, she could have just exiled, you know, and stayed in the United States. But then her family would be left back there in the Cuba, and she was afraid for what might happen to her family, you know. And so well, that has to be really hard. Yes. Yeah, so these, so, uh, you know, this was a, you know, one of the webinars, but then the, the different artists like Diane said, oh, there was artists. And then one artist that we came, became friends with Diane, you remember, uh, KJ, Kali, yeah, I, yeah. I never say her name, <laughs> Kali, who is an African artist. You know, she's from Kenya, Kenya yeah. in uh -huh. the United States, because for, I used to always crack me up because she would use phrases. So very very American. Well, she she got her education in the United States, but she was from you know, from from Kenya, that's where her family is and everything. But she was living in Saudi Arabia, and her job, you know, she does very unique, uh, uh, just beautiful, you know, Af African heritage art and everything. And in fact, she joined our group for a long time, and I've stayed in contact with her, you know, quite often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I even talked to her on. Uh... <laughs> on uh facebook and she was in y'all's class instead of mine so yep. and actually really sweet yesterday she completely kj completely blew me away <clears throat> put a posting of this um uh, ceramics fine fine bone china with different art designs and everything and she specifically flagged me and said clyde your art would look beautiful on stuff like this and I was like, wow, I guess I, and I made a comment of what well, my art is on, you know, it's on some, on some of the sites on coffee mugs. Her immediate reply, reply was coffee mugs is not fine China. <laughs> <laughs> now, especially your koi fish, koi fish and butterflies. Those would look great as a dinnerware series, you know, where they have the different, yeah. different koi fish on each plate. You know, so, so I, you know, I, I told her, I said, well, I'm going to have to research this. And she said, yeah, I'll research too. And see if, said, if I can find a vendor, <laughs> where, you know, like do, you know, drop shipping. Well, I did. I found an American vendor, but, uh, unfortunately, uh, there's only one side effect. They're very, very good. And they have a, a complete line. It's, but their, their plates is more decorative plates. They're not, uh, for actual dining wear, you know? Uh, in fact, they say do not, they recommend that they're only used for display, you know, but, uh, 
but uh, they have different size plates, but they have other stuff. The only catch is uh, they require you to set up through Shopify, and Shopify requires a monthly fee, which I don't have the money to do right now. But how much is Shopify? Well, what I was I, trying to find that out the other day. Which plan you use? The plan, the lowest cost plan is like twenty nine dollars a month. Yeah, whatever. No, okay, yeah. <laughs> and then well. there's ongoing transaction fees too very much kind of like etsy you know in a sense you know but uh, anyhow i never ever would have uh met kj because i i mess up her name really bad she doesn't mind people going going by kate most people call her kj yeah yeah and, um through <laughs> it had been for paul klein's you know course and everything and uh some of the other folks you know we kept in contact with and uh what I found interesting, and, and Diane, you can uh, uh, agree or disagree on, on this. <laughs> the first couple core classes, when people would talk, I always I got the impression that they were kind of uh, bloviating, uh, uh, bragging, uh, kind of you know, and making themselves you know look you know, trying to sound super intelligent and, and their replies. And I mean, there quite a bit of that was, you know, was, a, but then by time, I guess it's like the third or the fourth, that all went out the window. <laughs> yeah, Everybody <but> relaxed. <laughs> relaxed. Paul, Paul had, had us almost crying at different times. I mean, it was incredible. The transformation. Yeah. And everything. So, I picked that first one just so to give our listeners an idea of just how many different artists that he has worked with around the world and his, his, his stick and how he, uh, you know, um, um, has a way of, uh, getting into, getting into your soul in a certain way. And, uh, um, without me, uh, continue talking, I've got some clips. Okay. And I want I want to play a clip. We're going to play an audio clip. It's about seven minutes of uh, when when we because we continued a group of us continued meeting after class was over with, and Paul he always had an invitation, but he seemed like he never made time. But he finally he popped in, kind of like a surprise visit, and he gave it gave us a little bit of his uh, words of wisdom. And so I've uh, taken uh, some of that clip. So let me start this up everybody to listen to this is so you can actually hear a little bit about paul klein's philosophy if you don't get a chance to watch the videos i don't know that i'm sure you guys need to be invigorated i wouldn't be surprised you already are you know and i was thinking about your question clyde and trying to focus and then i started not focusing um and then i found the answer um and you know, at the top of my Klein Artist Works website, it says, Baby Steps are a bulldozer. And I really think it's about baby steps. And I have to do chemotherapy every other week. And I have to nap pretty much 10 to 12 out of 14 days. Um, and I wanted to go to a base Cubs game today and I decided to take a nap instead. And it was a makeup day for a rain out, you know, so I could have gotten tickets, you know, like at an affordable price instead of, I can't imagine they charge that much price. <laughs> um, and I decided to take a nap instead. One of the, I've learned a lot from cancer. And one of the things I've learned is that I cannot say yes to so many of the things I used to say yes to, and that I need to make a priority of things that are important to me and kind of remember them. Um, you guys know my stick. I need to be generous to be able to feel like I'm not an asshole. And if I feel like I'm not an asshole, then I feel like, okay, maybe I'm entitled to live a little longer because I'm doing some good around this place. You know, so that's my sting. And to do that, I need to do something every day or pretty much to be generous, you know. So, like, um, working with you guys one-on-one, -on -one, 
I charge you, but I try to deliver more than I charge. And that makes me feel like I'm an all right person. Um, so I need to do that. I think you guys need to focus on, I always want to have an upward trajectory. Maybe I can actually always have an upward trajectory if I average it out enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, some days are not always upward, you know, and I think the challenge is what can I do today to make it upward? Or what can I do to make today better than I feel right now or better than yesterday? And I'm pretty comfortable, I think, misquoting um, Willie Nelson's biography, which is a video biography, Moving is Still Moving. No, is that it? Still, still is still moving. You know, I mean, there's even something to be learned from stillness. I mean, I think, I wonder about people who've taken the course that I don't hear from. I mean, I'm certain that there are people who take the course who are somewhere between, like, I'm at a tilting point between being an artist and not being an artist. I really want to do this. Is it me? I think there's some people who take the course with that thinking. And part of the course is, yeah, you can totally be you. Oh, and by the way, that's not easy. <laughs> you know, I want you to work your ass off at being who you are. And um, I think that takes some discipline. I think we need to work on that on a daily basis. I don't feel like that's different than being alive. I don't feel that's different than me going to the, to the market. You know, I mean, I still want to approach it as in, can I do this better? Can I make the teller smile? Can I get someone to have a nicer day? You know, just because I happen to be in it. If I can do that to one person, cool. If I can do that one to one person and have it be about art, two points. If I can do it to one person who doesn't get art and, and have them really like it, that's like, that's like three points. Um, so... That's my answer, is keep moving. And it doesn't really matter how fast. You know, that I feel like if we're dedicated to this thing, we keep moving, even on the days. I mean, you know, I remember when I went and visited a friend in New York City when I was 28, and I was blown away by the fact that he would go run every day. And I would say, fuck, man, if you can go run every day, I can go run every day. So I started running. And then I made a deal. I do these things. I make deals with myself. Like, I really need to call somebody who owes me money or is supposed to do something. i got to get in touch with Clyde, let's say. And I'll go, all right, I need to do that now. Okay, 24 hours. I've got 24 hours from the time that I realize I really need to do this before I have to do it. And at that point, I can go, I can, my deal is, I can do anything, you know, I can get in touch with Clyde anytime in there I want to, but if I don't, when it's 24 hours, I've got to do it at that moment or I'm a schmuck. You know, so I make that deal with myself and that makes me enough comfortable that I go ahead and do it. You know, and I got to keep moving. I got to do some generosity so I get some strokes back so I feel like I'm engaged with humanity and I need to exercise, and my exercise drill is no more than two days in a row without exercise. And I have done that now for 43 years. Um, you know, I, I can take a day off if I go, if I'm, tra if, you know, I can take time off if I'm traveling, and I can take time off if I'm in the hospital. Other than that, I got to go exercise. You know, and on some days when I'm on chemo, exercise means walking around the block. And on some days it means bicycling 25 miles. But the point is that if we, you, are committed enough to do piddly shit a little bit every fucking day, <laughs> at some point you're going to say, this is stupid, I should do fucking more. And then you do. You know, so all you need, all you need to do is a little bit. And then at some point, your conscience is going to kick in and go, I should either shit or get off the pot. I should either commit to doing this because I'm investing my whole freaking life in it, or I should just go be a hitchhiker and bop around the planet and not do this, or go be a mom, or go be a dad, or go be a business person, or heaven forbid, go be a banker. Money. Somebody else's money. What a God forbidden thing. So at any rate, 
Mm. I think make a make a palatable drill about it. You know, do something you need to do to make yourself exercise. Do something you need to do to make your soul better every day. And you can take a day off every once in a while, but don't take more than two off in a row. All right. So, you two got want to add to that? Have you been doing taking baby steps? Have you been in an upward trajectory since taking his course? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, sometimes it doesn't seem like you're doing anything, but because <laughs> there's not much to show for it. But I think you know, pretty much every day I'm doing something to get me further along. And the, even you know, us three, like we've done a we've come a long way since we took those, that class really when you think about it we have yeah <laughs> especially definitely i mean in the past yeah last week i mentioned some things i'm i'm not going to go down a list but oh my god i i mean at the time i took that class i didn't have because you know almost everybody in that class in fact i think everybody else in that class they you could say they had a resume as an artist i had Zilch. I had nothing, nothing as a resume <laughs> as an artist. Now I got a heck of a good resume. <laughs> and it's due to Paul Klein. I, I, uh, you know, and I continually, uh, you know, I try to follow that, you know, baby steps and have an upward tra trajectory. And sometimes it's a lot. Sometimes it's, you know, it's even some steps backwards, you know, whatever. Um, one of the others, okay, I had to, I, I did a, my one-on-ones and because I, uh, he hired me for that special project as payment for that project was he gave me some, uh, one-on-ones. I think I ended up having four of them with him. And so I took a clip from the first one-on-one -on -one, and it was the first one that just to give, I'm going to play that. It's only about two minutes to give our listeners an idea of, when he is with an individual artist, okay, you hear how he is with the group. He's the same way. He talks the same way when he's an individual, but he's far more inspiring. And it's, it's just, and just, I can't say enough. So let's play that. I haven't pursued. It's one of those things. I've thought about it. You know, I'm saying like a, gra a, a graphic novel. I'm not saying a graphic novel. I'm thinking images that, I think you could do three images that have no relationship to one another. And I'm thinking you're putting, I don't think the idea is for you to create a graphic novel. I think the idea is for you to create images that you love, that the people you're already connected to love. <laughs> I think you have a cash cow. I think the problem is what are you going to do with your money? Not where's the money going to come from? <laughs> I appreciate your confidence. <laughs> I mean, if you, how many people listen a day? It rotates throughout the... Through, through. Well, let's say one-tenth of one percent of a million. Like, I've got, I've got a little program right now. Wait a minute. How much is one-tenth of one percent... Of a million. Okay, so now if that number of people, that's 1,000 people. If one-tenth of one percent of a million people give you $10 a year on a print, that's $10,000. I'm thinking that's like nothing. You know? I think, I think you just, I think you have a website that you start putting up some images that you like, and you make it really simple, and people, and there's an order form, and you just have a good time. <laughs> so, you, so you think I should really pursue? Okay. I think all you have to do is be who you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, some fart who likes these old stories and likes drawing. Okay, let's go. All right. That is definitely vintage Paul Klein. And uh, just for our listeners, uh, no, I didn't become a millionaire. No, I didn't get rich. 
It had nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with the concept that and the strat- strategy that Paul and I came up with. And uh, I uh, looked at the fourth video. There were some things that he recommended I implement that I didn't implement. So I take full responsibility. Uh, there were some other things that we needed to do. Like a, he thought I had a large mailing list, which I didn't. So I needed to purchase that which it came down to just not having the money to really launch it the way it needed to be launched. Doesn't mean it's dead. Doesn't mean it's not valid. And it's, it's like uh, my ace in a hole, you know, I says, when I get the money, look out. (laughs) I got the entire strategy. I got the concept. I got it down. And um, another thing that, which he, he did uh, mention in our, personal one-on-one videos he said something about he said uh credibility and establishment he says i know i believe in you i know your art is good but you gotta give the rest of the world a chance and that's when he's talked about entering exhibitions and things and so i've now built that credibility so when i come up with the funds look out world pulp radio art is going to hit you hard (laughs) So that was for me personally, you know, that's, uh, you know, and, uh, Diane, did you ever get a chance to, to talk with him, to strategize with him a little bit? No, I didn't. Um, but just from taking the class, um, it made, since I went to college for art years ago, the, the, um, at the time, the only way to become an, a fine artist basically was to, um, go through the gallery system and so I hadn't there was a few years there where I didn't do any art and um, I was kind of getting back into it and the world had opened up with the internet and everything so um, I knew there was other options out there but I just didn't know how to go about finding them or you know what they were exactly so that's really where he helped help me personally as far as making me realize that there was a lot more um, opportunities out there than I thought. And Constance, what about, what about you? Did you get set up a strategy with them or? No, I never had um, one-on-one conversations with him. Um, He was becoming a little more ill during our, during our uh, sessions, but I know he was still, you know, talking to other people, but I just, I don't, I I think the reason that I didn't do it was because I was unsure of which way I wanted to go. Did I want to stick with the jewelry making or did I want to go back to painting? And it took me a while. And maybe if I'd had those conversations with you, it may have helped me through them, but I, I felt like it was my responsibility to figure that out first before trying to brainstorm with him. Well, you've so. had Diane though, at least, you know, so, and we are the, the products of uh, Paul. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting Paul Klein indirectly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You said many times that our meetings have, uh, have, have helped you along and uh, the, you two have helped me tremendously really. And uh, the, the, when he talked to talks, you know, about the collaboration, the biggest asset, the best asset of his course was meeting the other artists and forming collaborations and contacts that was, mm-hmm. was a tremendous value, you know, especially to me. Cause I mean, you know, as far as I concern, concerned, uh, they, you know, they were all, you know, all better than me. In fact, uh, in that, in our fourth, I was watching today, the fourth video uh, session, <laughs> one-on-one session, and I was, we were talking about our meetings, you know, that we had established and he, cause he asked us, well, how's that going? I said, yeah, it's still, it's going, going strong. I said, you ought to join us again. Cause he had already joined us once, you know, and he said, well, you know, the problem with the chemo, it's really, you know, gets me down some, so, uh, yeah, it will. you know, but, uh, but he said, that's good. You know? And, and I said, well, I said, those artists, they're all better than me. No, they're not. <laughs> just different they're not he said they just they've got their own thing he said you're doing your own thing he said they're not better than you never think that it's just different right away he jumped on me you know Mm -hmm. never think that (laughs) 
Well, that's the that's the one of the misnomers, I guess, about artists that we're all like in competition with one another, but we're really not because mm-hmm. we all have our own paths that we're following. We all have our own styles, our own, you know, our own voice, and you can't really compete with each other in that on that. It's like, yeah, it's it's not even in comparison. It's, it's kind of weird, but um, yeah, that's something that he was really adamant about. Absolutely. And a lot of things that he, uh, he brings, brings up is, uh, uh, very, I guess the reason why, uh, we're, we're kind of attracted to uh, Gary Vanacek because Gary Vanacek does that. Gary Vanacek is very, very positive and he emphasizes that you can do it just to get off your butt and do it, you know? And that's the kind of way, you know, he just says it a little bit differently than Paul, but nonetheless, it's still, it's the same message. Get it. Well, it goes back to, I mean, we've talked about this before of, of staying on your own path and um, not trying to be somebody you're not, you know, and keep your, your art honest and into who you are. So that's kind of, it's, it's really an important idea. It's like real basic, but it's so important. And needs to be drilled in like <clears throat> that little spill clip that i I played, you know, Paul Klein, you know, he says, be yourself. And then you find out, Ooh, this is hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard st- being yourself and stay in yourself, you know, maintain. Well, I, I think what makes it hard is a lot of people don't know who they are. No, you know, cause you don't yeah. really think about it. It's not something you, you sit and think about like, who am I? Where, are, you know, where do I want to be in 10 years? What, I mean, you don't think about what you want your be- life to be like you know, really like in, in that depth, like, so it's, it's something that it's not like common for people to do. And yeah. a lot of people don't know who they are. Yep. And some of them are still trying to find their artistic voice, you know, and that can change in 10 years a lot, depending on, yep. you know, which way you decide to go with your work. For our listeners, if you look at that video, you're you know, <clears throat> on a Zoom meeting. So you can see all of it. There's not, there's hard, I don't think there's any 20 somethings. I think they're all, you know, in their, you know, thirties and, and older, you know, practicing artists. He, and he, he, he addresses that. He says that he's found that the, you know, in your 20, you really, you haven't lived life yet. You know, you don't really know what you want. And, uh, but he says, after you've been raked through the coals for a while, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're open you're kind of open up to you know try something different you know and <laughs> well your, your life experiences too play into that because when you're younger you don't have those experiences to draw on so you're still in the experimentation stage you're not really um your voice hasn't really formed yet so you know you're not there yet so the, the older you are the more experiences you have that you can put into your art that's nothing against the young folks but hey no we're, getting- <laughs> We're all young ones. <laughs> but- and also, there are a lot of young people who know exactly where they want to go. You know, so. Yeah, they were, you know, good parenting and, and they were, you know, they got their head on the, on the shoulders, right? And yes. So I'm not, we're not uh, a bunch of old fogies, you know, lashing out. <laughs> people. No, no, come on, kids. You can do it. You know, <laughs> In many in many ways, I emphasize to you know my daughters are better than me, and they're they're able to handle things much better than what I did when I was their age. So uh, I'm you know very proud of that, you know. And uh, I there's quite a few young people out there. I know we have quite a few young listeners. So uh, I hope that uh, you take the time to uh, if you go to uh, kleinartistworks dot com. The link is also on, on the info page on the uh, talkartpodcast.com at the bottom uh, to that site, which is, has all the videos. He has all the uh, webinars with the art experts over the years that he's had interviewed. I hope you take the time to uh, look at some of those. And uh, it's a wealth of information, and it's a generosity that he has a legacy that he has left to the world. So with that, I'll say it, you know, rest in peace, Il Maestro, because that's what I, during our, I, I, I gave him that nickname. I call him the master in Italian, Il Maestro. 
<laughs> and uh, he was uh, he he was something else. And I, I, I think I've said before, uh, my life and my career and my soul is better for having met and interchanged and intercommunicated and talked was Paul Klein. That's it. Diane Constance, you want one, one final word you want to say or? Oh, I think you said it pretty well. I mean, yeah. we are all better for have known him. So. Yes, I agree. <laughs> all right. We will wrap up this episode of artist, the artist fans podcast episode 67 for Monday, October the 19th. I think next week is going to be our last episode, and maybe we'll review some goals next week. We didn't get a chance to do it this week. We were a little bit longer than uh, I expected. But um, I'm going to say good night to Diane and Constance, and I'll let Diane say good night to everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, Diane. Good night, Clyde. Good night, everybody. Thanks for stopping in. Good night, folks, and thank you so much for listening. If you enjoy these podcasts, <laughs> Please give us a thumbs up. Give us a star, five star rating. Yeah. Let us know you enjoyed. Give us some love. Bye bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kill at www dot cjkaleartworks.com if you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the artist friends podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery dash otr dot com if you enjoy these podcasts please give us a thumbs up or star rating and most of all send us your comments this podcast is issued under the creative commons license